Yes, there is a man outside doing his yard work in November, and it's loud, and you can probably hear it in the background. Hopefully the microphone's not picking it up. It is a directional microphone pointed at me, not at this dude, but I don't know what kind of yard work he's even doing in November here after it's already snowed here several times and there is no yard to be worked, as far as I would imagine. Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I have another sewing diary slash tutorial slash long documentary length film for you all today. I have been wondering, should I be cutting these down into like 10 minute videos? Would they do much better here with the algorithm? And because like a lot of other sewing channels, it seems to me that they make their videos quite short. Um, and I think that's easier for like people to watch many of them for the YouTube to recommend. But I just think there is some value in my rambly, detailed pattern drafting, then sewing, then showing you the finished product deal. I don't know. I, I, a lot of people have asked me, please never stop doing these long videos. And so I think, well, now I shouldn't stop doing them. If people are finding value in them, even if it's only a handful of people who are finding value in having the long form, I think that is still valid. Um, even if they might do better if I do short versions, how would you guys feel? Let me know in the comments below. How would you feel if I did these like long, detailed, me rambling, versions of these videos and then also did like short cut down versions and like maybe uploaded the like short version like the tldr slash like the cliff notes version of these videos like the next day or the week after things like that um it would be kind of doubling up on my content in that sense because it would be like another video but it would just be the same stuff only cut down so people who had already watched this long one it probably has no interest for them but then i'm sure there are some people who just like would never click on a video that's as long as these ones are What's your opinion? Would you feel offended if I did like the long version and the short version of these videos? Let me know in the comments below. But today, as I said in my what I'm planning to sew for fall and winter video that I'll link in a card up here, um, I'm going to be making a black cotton sateen version of a dress I made this last summer. I made this white twill dress this last end of May, early June, I think is when I made this. And it did turn out, I, I really like the design. I like the style of it, but it did turn out a little bit big and kind of fits awkwardly up in the shoulder area. So I want to do some changes to the pattern. So I figured I might as well. And like, I had some questions about this, like people were asking for the pattern and asking if I had filmed it and I had to, so I felt bad. So now we're going to be starting over and doing this dress from scratch. I'll be using my basic block pattern and showing you how I would make a pattern similar to this. Out of that, I did drop a sketch and we'll talk about a couple of the changes I want to do for the second version of this dress design. But basically I'll be just making this, it'll look very similar in the end, I suppose, um, in black cotton sateen. I might change up the sleeve a little bit. I'm definitely changing up the back of this dress because it, the fit on the back of this, what happened? I don't, hmm, all kinds of things went wrong apparently. And we'll see if I can manage to fix some of those problems with this version. So before I ramble on any longer, because we know I can, uh, let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom, as I always say. Here we are back at the blue drafting table for yet another adventure. So here's the situation. This is my sketch from the summer, actually. I erased another dress that was here so I could redraw it, the same dress over here. But this was my original sketch for the white twill version of this design that I made over the summer. Now this, again, did not fit perfectly up in the bodice. I don't know exactly what happened, what went wrong. Uh, little things I think added up to make it not the perfect fit. Um, it came out a little bit big. Um, it also came out, I think the darts are a little bit pointy on this dress and I think that's partially due to the fabric just being thicker because it's not like I changed my darts or anything. Um, I think just that thicker twill fabric, of course, it holds the point of a dart very well. Um, but that's something I want to consider moving forward because um, although this dress that I'll be making today for this project is in a thinner fabric and show, so should behave, I do think I'm actually just going to try two waist darts instead of one just for funsies because this is going to be a solid black dress and the more detail you can add to those kind of things and the more texture and interest, the better because, of course, it's just a solid black dress and I have many of them. So why not add a little bit more detail to this one? Anyway, this is the white dress. Now, part of the reason I think that this dress, I'll put a picture of it finished here as well, doesn't fit very well up here in the shoulder area is because the way that I did these, I guess it's a yoke uh, situation to construct the top here is like this. So if you imagine, this is my neck. I came in at an angle to create that little front design so I came in at an angle here, and then in the back, there wasn't anything, like if you see this dotted line here, there wasn't anything to hold all that up. In the back, I, it mirrors this, so it has an angle doing the same sort of thing. So there's not really any 
thing holding the dress onto the body up here, if this had a higher neckline in the back, I think the front would have sat better and wouldn't have lifted off the shoulder so much. And you can see in the pictures here, this sleeve area is almost kind of sliding off the end of my shoulder here. It's because there's nothing to keep it from doing so. There's nothing in the back holding it onto my body like that. So this is sort of sliding off a little bit because this fabric is heavy um, in like weight, in not only like in mass, but also in like the texture uh, is heavy as well. So it has a lot of structure itself, but not being held onto my body very well. So that kind of is sliding off my shoulder in these pictures you can kind of tell. And there's a, it's just not a very good fit up here. Um, I think part of this can be solved by I, A, either um, raising the neckline completely in the back, but the back of this dress was fun and I wanna try and do a similar but fixed fit version of it. So this is kind of like version one here of this bodice. I think the problem here is resulting mostly from this angle um, and having it be mirrored in the back as well. And I think if it came straight down, then it would be a much better fit for me. So over here, I've drawn this line little here. So you can kind of see how I think a better fit could be achieved here by drawing a line here. So down here in version one up here, version two, imagining that instead of having this little area, I need a pointer, having like if you imagine this coming straight down, you have this triangle of nope here. Here, let me switch hands. So if uh, this angle comes in out from along the shoulder here, instead of like a normal dress would be like this, if I had the, my full, like my full bodice pattern normally would come down like this, um, but I cut into that. So it's almost like cutting a triangle away here that provides stability. Um, so here, I think what I'm gonna do is come straight down and come out from there instead of creating the shape for these little points by coming out along the shoulder here I'm going to just come in on the other side and add that point on so that's going to be the difference I'm going to use here and then I am just going to do something different in the back I'm not even sure what I want to do yet but I do know I want it to come up higher because I think having the shape completely mirrored and having a lower back like I did on the first version of this dress is part of what contributed to the fit up here at the shoulders and in the back not being great so those are just kind of some of the things I want to try to fix what is basically a wearable muslin for this design at this point, um, the white twill version I made this summer. So hopefully that made some sense. I'm trying to explain what I think went wrong with the white twill version of this. Um, I had shown, of course, on my Instagram, me making this dress and then didn't record it for you all. So that's why I'm making another version. Um, but I also, if I'm gonna make it again, I want to fix what I didn't like about it. So over here on the version that I'm going to be making today, the difference is I'm not gonna put the little tabs on the sleeve. I don't even remember if I did that on that version because it was in the summer and I don't remember. But of course I don't want this one to be as safari-ish. I do want to keep the top stitching just because again, that adds some interest to a basic black sateen dress here. And I am going to be taking one of the waist, well, one of the waist darts, both of the waist darts and splitting it in from one dart into two darts. So I'm gonna be adding uh, a dart here at the waist and taking some of the fullness from the one dart and using it into a second one just to add a little more interest and to try and make my dart points a little bit less pointy on a thicker fabric like this. A cotton sateen isn't I mean, you have, can have thinner ones and you can have thicker ones. This one from Joann's is a little bit on the medium to heavy side. So I just wanna make sure I don't end up with anything pointy going on here because I really, I think this is gonna be a really good workhorse dress in my collection. Um, I think this is gonna be something I can style up and down and wear quite frequently. So I want it to turn out well, <laughs> basically. Uh, I am gonna be doing turned up cuffs here with some top stitching as well. Top stitching along these little fun yoke sections here. Um, along in the back as well. If I end up doing something similar in the back, we'll see. Um, this one I did have pockets. I don't think I have enough fabric to do pockets for this one, so I probably won't get to do anything fun over here on this skirt, but I will be showing you how I draft an A-line shaped skirt out of my pencil skirt block today. Um, and then also this one had some large buttons as decorative accents, and I won't be doing that on this one just because I want to be able to wear it with lots of different brooches um, or dress clips and things like that. So I don't want to busy up the design with buttons on this one just because I don't know exactly what jewelry I want to wear with it and if I leave buttons off it gives me more options in that area. So first things first, how am I going to make this pattern? I have this pattern of course still, it's still in a bag around here somewhere. Here, I took it out of the bag. So I have this pattern, I saved it and I put, that's what I do when I, my patterns are complete by the way. I just fold them and put them in little Ziplocs and I try and um, draw or label this. I didn't even write anything on here, it was so lazy. I was just like, how do I describe this? So I just drew a picture on the front of the bag here and I just put the pattern in these and I store them in these little Ikea boxes on my bookshelves over here. Still messy. 
Um, and that's how I store my patterns once I am done with them. So I have this pattern still, but of course I wasn't super happy with the result. So I will just, I normally I would, uh, um, normally I would modify this pattern and fix it to my liking for creating a next version. But because I want to show you all how to get to this general design from a basic block, I will be just going from scratch today and I will just completely start over and make this dress today. All right, so I have my design, I have my ruler. Again, you can get these at um, most craft paint shops uh, in like the drawing or drafting area, as well as at fabric stores or quilting shops probably definitely have this kind of ruler. I actually have a centimeter one somewhere from when I was studying in Europe uh, because I was having to use centimeters and metric when I was studying abroad. And then here at home, of course, I always use inches. So I have quite a few of these rulers. They're relatively cheap and super useful to be able to see through them, of course. So I really recommend these. And then I just have a pencil. And here, of course, I have my basic block pattern. So I've just gone ahead. Oh, and again, uh, I always get questions about this material. This is just black poster board, like the kind that you would do like your science presentation on in fifth grade. Um, so this is just from like Walgreens or Joann's or Michael's, just black poster board. So it's nothing special material. I know it looks kind of fancy, but it's just because I use black and then I use white gel pen on that to have something a little bit more fun. The, the dark mode version of a pattern. But I've just gone ahead and traced a copy of my basic block front here and marked all the relevant things I need to know. Of course, this is gonna be cut on the fold here at the center front. I did go ahead and mark the apex from this because I'm gonna be doing some dart manipulation and then mark my side dart and my waist dart in. So the first thing I'm going to do to this pattern is I'm going to add another dart to the waist. Um, this is a huge dart, as you can see, but actually both my darts are quite big. That's partially to do with my full bust adjustment that is inherent in this pattern. It gives you larger darts because you're basically dealing with a larger difference between the waist measurement and the bust measurement. So since there is a lot of difference between the inches of this measurement and this measurement, it has to be removed somehow. And so larger darts are part of how that happens. And larger darts do tend to be pointier. Now, of course, I wear 1940s and 50s style like bras and in general style. So I don't mind the bust being a more pointier silhouette because that is what is accurate. But I don't want to be, you know, I don't have the pointiest of darts ever. So what I'm going to do today, just for trying something new, is I'm going to go from the apex here and draw a line down here to the waist. And I'm going to have a style line there that I will open up and then I will swing part of this dart closed to open up a second one here at the waist. That way there will be in total on the front piece, six darts, which seems excessive, but you know, that's uh, what we call a design detail, right? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I end up liking it or not. It's not gonna be super noticeable because again, black, you know, it's all gonna mend together, meld together basically. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is just draw in a line from my apex to where I want my dart to open up. And then of course, draw a line from my dart leg up to my apex as well so that I can swing this one closed and swing another one open. All right, so I just chose a place here along the waistline. Um, this'll be, I don't know, probably, a, what is that, an inch? An inch and a quarter? No. Oh. Mm, yeah, an inch and a quarter um, away from the other dart. If you imagine this triangle, of course, it's going to go away. So there will be a dart, two darts at the waist here, um, and it will be angled Instead of them being both parallel like this, it will be both angled towards the apex because everything always swings out from the apex point anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and slash along this line I drew from this dart leg up to the apex. And then I'm gonna slash along this line, which will become a new dart leg over here. And then I'll show you how this uh, being opened up, you can swing it around and swivel. <laughs> I can't speak. And swivel as much of this fullness as you want into this one. Uh, I'm probably gonna try and even it out quite equally. So we'll I'll show you what happens when you slice those lines. All right, so I have slashed up along those two lines here, and now this area, you don't slash all the way through so that you can have a little bit of a hinge, a, sw a little swinging point here. So this is my original darts fullness. So I'm gonna go ahead and swing some of that closed to open up a dart here. So if you, I'm gonna go ahead and measure in a second here when I'm not holding a iPhone above the table here. I'm going to measure and see how big this dart is from point to point anyway. And then I'm just gonna split that so that this dart and this dart are of very similar size here. So I've got that quite split. And then I will go ahead and tape this down and then tape some extra paper in here. Okay, so now I have my original dart. You can still see it hanging out underneath here. Swung so that this, uh, from point to point here, 
is two inches and then this new dart is also actually two inches. So that makes my math easy, nice. Um, and then I've just filled in a piece of paper into where that had opened up just to fill this in. And so we're still swinging out from the apex. So I am just gonna come down an inch and a quarter from my apex. Um, I think my book says five eighths of an inch, but this seems to be what I have on my block. So I'm just gonna go with that. So I'm gonna come down an inch and a quarter here. And this is actually gonna be the end of my dart point. You don't want your darts to ever extend exactly to the apex unless you do want it to be a cone. Um, that will give you a very con conical shape. So. Um, I'm just going to come down an inch and a quarter here, put a point, and then I will mark from that point to the end here and here to create these new dart legs. The way you can get the correct like little pointed shape here is to fold these closed. So like fold one edge along here and then just slice along the edge to smooth it out and then it will give you the correct shape at the end of your dart. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish things up, draw those dart legs in, um, fold and cut my points as it were, and then we will have two darts here on the waistline of this bodice. So again, I just have, I'm just folding these darts closed with the fullness facing towards the center front because that's how I will sew these. And then I just slice off this extra here um, below the waist to get the correct shape for my darts. So I have pulled out my original pattern that I made for the white twill version here, just so we can talk a little bit again about what I'm gonna be doing differently. Um, so what we're gonna be doing up here at the top here is creating a yolk, not a, not a yolk, that's for eggs, but a yolk, which is like um, using a lot of shirt pattern and things like that. I'll put a picture used for like Western shirts. Um, you can do all kinds of different things with them in general, but today we're just going to be using it to add some interest up here at the shoulder, basically not going to be a lot of times people will like, for example, close this dart, open it up and then gather that into the yoke. That's what I did on my green dress. I'll put a card up to that one. Um, I created one side, an asymmetric yoke with gathers situation for that one. So if you wanna see how I did that, you can click over to that video as well. But this one, I'm not gonna be adding any fullness into that seam I'll be creating. I'm just using it as a style line, um, as a point of interest, basically, um, not anything to control fullness. So over here on my pattern I used from this last summer, um, I wanted to keep this curved neckline. I did really like, I really liked the shape of the neckline on this first dress. So I wanna keep the shape as similar as I can while adding in, you can see this little striped piece of paper that I've taped on here to remind myself that I had this angle coming in like that. Like I said on when I was uh, discussing them here, I had this angle here, boop, along here. And instead I want that to be much more straight this time, just to give me a better, closer fit up here on the shoulder, I think. So um, this little piece here I had taped on at some point to remind myself that don't use this line again. So um, same, I agree with me again. So the way this works is basically you, you know, kind of draw what you want and then cut the two pieces apart. So this originally was part of this pattern piece. Now they look more similar. Um, and then you cut that apart. And then of course, anytime you cut in to your pattern, you have to add seam allowance. So I've added seam allowance here along that cut edge as well. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is come over here. I am just gonna copy this curved neckline over. Again, um, you know, where you draw your necklines, it's really up to you if you want something to be lower. Uh, always just keep in mind, the apex is like the mid point of your bust. So if you imagine that's where that point is, height on the body, you can decide like, so like if you want something that comes quite far down, that would be like the lowest possible kind of neckline. You can of course, start inserting like mesh lace and go lower if you should like, or have really, really deep Vs if you want. But if you imagine like, this is probably like the lowest I would ever go for like a day dress maybe, <laughs> um, just personally, but, and then kind of go up from there. If you imagine this is your armpit kind of level, that's where that neckline will be. So um, just when you're drawing your necklines, keep in that kind of zone. Again, if you're doing a pattern from scratch, if you've never made it before, go ahead and make a muslin and you'll find out if your neckline's too high or too low quite quickly um, when trying on the mock-up. But for me, because I've kind of already made a mock-up, I'm just going to use that neckline because I liked it. So I just went ahead and draw, drew that same, trace that same curve onto my new pattern as well. And I'm going to draw the yoke in just from the same place as well. Again, kind of choose this one. It angles up a little bit. So from here, it's going to angle, instead of coming straight out to the neckline, it's going to angle up a little bit just because that's the style lines I drew and what I want to keep. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in the basic shape of what I want here um, with that kind of straight, using this probably from this point, straight down to create a very similar um, neckline to the original version I made of this, but just with that added triangle for some better fit, basically. 
And again, I, you know, when I drew this one, I didn't do it based off of any like mathematical formula. I just drew it and hoped it would work, um, which is how I do most of my pattern drafting. So like how far along the armhole I came down, I just kind of was looking at my picture. Like if I drew this up here, then I would come up closer up here, but it's kind of farther down, which allows me the room to angle it up. So I just, I didn't choose this based on any measurement. I just chose it randomly. Um, there's a little bit of like, you know, intuitiveness involved in this. There is a little bit of just like hoping for the best involved in this. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw on the general shape here of what I want and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've kind of drawn in a similar shape up in here. Uh, the first line I drew was a little too straight so I angled it up a little bit more coming out from the point here. Um, this pencil line is basically the straightenified version of my first dress here. So this modification that I was showing you earlier. So. Um, it should be a very, very similar neckline, except for this angle being a little like more straight here to this. My question is now, do I want to do that? And I am going to go ahead to create, an, because this is almost straight down, maybe like one eighth of an inch in from my block pattern. Um, I do want to add the illusion of an angled line here. So, but instead of cutting in this way, I'm going to add on a triangle this way. So I'm going to come straight down and then I'm just going to add on a quarter of an inch to create that angle instead of coming and taking that quarter of an inch out this way, I'm gonna add it on down here. Um, but the question is now, you see this red curve here, do I want to do it instead of straight like this, kind of winged, like a little, almost more bat Halloween-y kind of shape to create this more like swooping curve here, like bat-like situation. Hmm, oh man, you know I just thought too? How cool would it be to do this, where it swings here and then points down as well. It might, see, when you start adding points to yokes though, it gets Western really quickly. So you kind of do have to be careful if you're me and you're not super into Western style. Um, even though I do live in Colorado, it's not really my jam, weirdly enough. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I can't decide. Do I want to make this swing like this? Which, if this here, this red line on here would look like this, sort of. Hmm, easily distracted. I think I'm gonna go <laughs> with my original design idea just because I want this dress to work for more than just Halloween. Ugh, boring, I know. Maybe in the future I'll find some, maybe I'll make a purple one with bat situation or maybe orange with black top stitching sometime, yeah? Maybe that we'll use that kind of thing in the future sometime. Tell me if you wanna see me make a Halloween version of this dress basically. But I think I'll just stick with this purple dotted line here and be boring and make it quite straight. But this is where you can start, you know, making these sort of designs your own. Get super creative in here if you'd like to. Um, you can do almost any kind of shape you want with the yoke, so, and with your neckline in general, so. But I think I'm gonna be boring and go for the basic, more geometric one, but sort of a bat sort of styled one. Interesting, interesting. I do have a vest that I started making that has a much more bat shaped collar like this. Um, inspired by bat wings, I should say, or like spiderweb kind of effect. Um, but I haven't finished it yet because I made a mistake and I'm too lazy to seam rip it. So it's in my pile of needs to be finished things over there now. Oops. Um, let me know. Halloween specific design details. Are you interested? Let me know in the comments. The thing that is important to remember also while you're doing this sort of decision making up here is that this line here, that's where it will end up after the seam allowance is added. This triangle here, like I could make this come out a lot further because right now I'm trying to remember that it's gonna be, a, everything's gonna be a half an inch in further. This neckline will be a half an inch down because this is, unless I add seam allowance here, I'm trying to design with seam allowance in mind. So I'm imagining this neckline only a half inch lower, which means it comes in a half inch here so that when this comes in half an inch here, all the proportions kind of stay the same. So basically, if you're not planning on adding seam allowance to your edges, um, just remember that it's gonna come out of whatever you're drawing. So keep seam allowance in mind. Um, and then of course, as I always say, like when we're drawing new darts and stuff like that, we don't have to add seam allowance to anything going on down here. But when I split this yoke piece from the rest of the bodice, I will have to add seam allowance here because that is going to be a seam that will need to be sewn back together and if I wouldn't, didn't add seam allowance, it would be an inch that gets taken out of the height of my bodice, which would be a huge problem in fit. So I have to remember that when I cut this line apart here, I'm gonna have to add seam allowance to this edge and this edge. I'll show you that in just a moment here. I'm gonna cut 
all this little extra bit of neckline away so you can see what that looks like. And then I will cut the yoke and the bodice apart. So now I just have that excess cut away. You can get a better idea of what the neckline is going to look like. Of course, when it's mirrored, it's going to look more like this side mirrored. <laughs> uh, of course, I've gotten funny and drawn over my drawing here now, unfortunately. But um, in general, we've just done this basically. So it's going to look quite similar to this original design that I did over the summer. But now I'm going to go ahead and cut along this point here, add seam allowance to this edge. Um, and that's the only seam allowance I'm going to do for the bodice piece. But then up here, I'm also going to add seam allowance along this edge as well, because I do want it to finish along this line, I'm pretty sure. We'll see. I'll, I'll show you in a second. Okay, so here I have everything with seam allowance. What I did at uh, end up doing here is along this seam, I added a half inch regular seam allowance to the yoke and the bodice. But over here on the neckline edge here, I just added a quarter of an inch. So um, that basically that line in the center here was the original line I just drew. Um, and instead of adding a half inch seam allowance onto that, I decided that I was going to split the difference and eat up basically half uh, a quarter of an inch of this and then add on a quarter of an inch so that my finished, when everything is, you know, this has got its facing on, this has got its second layer on, the finished garment will look like this pink line. So this pink line is where my neckline will actually be. That is how big the triangle kind of sticking off of, or triangle, square, whatever, the little extension will actually be is along that pink line there. So. I'm just envisioning what it's going to actually look like when it's put together. I just wanted to show you kind of what I did there. Here I neither added the full half inch nor used what was there. So I kind of made it a little bit more confusing for us. I'm sorry about that, but that's just what I decided on. So unfortunately it's a little bit more confusing, but the pink line basically is what this will look like once it is sewn. If you imagine the half inch taken off of that stuff, that's how that, but anyway, the way I'm going to actually let's start talking about that, because how am I going to finish? this neckline. Basically what I'm going to do here is this yoke piece eventually will be one piece with the back. So I'm going to make the yoke for the back the same way like this. And instead of having a shoulder seam here, I will just tape those pieces together. I will show all you all this along the shoulder seam so that I don't have to have a shoulder seam basically. And then we'll cut this in one. Um, and because of that, I'm going to basically just line this piece. So the yoke will be lined, which will encase all my raw edges along here and along the neckline and stuff. And then for the neckline itself and the back neckline as well, I will use a facing. So I'll actually go ahead and make a facing pattern for this now so you can see what that looks like. So the last little step here for this front bodice piece was just to make a little facing for this. So I just do two and a half inches for my facings here. So I just have a little facing that will finish that neckline and then it will all be sewn into the yoke, which will be the front and back. Again, I will show you that when we get to that step. So this is my front bodice finish. This was the original version from this summer and this is the new version now again they look uh, quite similar but we have added that other dart into this one and then made those few modifications for fit up here um again you can imagine this one looked like this when i was sewing that dress so that kind of angle up there is the biggest change in this pattern and then the dart of course okay so here i have a traced copy of my back bodice block here. The only thing I've done different between my block and this trace is I've added another quarter inch along the center back just to have a little bit more room to play with when I'm setting in my zipper later. But otherwise, this is just exactly the same as my back bodice block pattern. Now, here is the very messy version that is from the white twill version I made over the summer. Um, so the corresponding back piece to that other pattern we were looking at. And this is a mess up here because I've been trying to play with what I want to do on this new one, um, just playing around with this. So again, this line here um, is where the seam allowance is so that this yoke piece is layered here. This is just taped down here. This is a separate piece, just like on the front, um, but I've just been playing around, taping it back together so I can see what I want to do for the shape back here. Um, because I really, I think on me, for whatever reason, I don't know if this is part of with my body shape or just how, just how dresses work. Um, I can't go too low in the backs of my dresses unless I have a completely high neck in the front. They just don't hang right. I don't know if it's the slope of my shoulder or something. They just don't fit as well if I don't have a higher back. So this originally the back on the 12 version came down to here, which is just a little above my like kind of armpit level you can see here. And I just need more fabric across the center back to add stability to the whole way the whole shoulder area fits. So I'm definitely not going to be coming down as low here. So I'm going to be moving the neckline up, um, which is what I'm playing with up here. 
which of course changes the angles of how I did my little yoke last time. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do up here. So first things first, I'm going to basically on my new version of this pattern, draw in, as you can see, the twill neckline here was all the way down here. So I'm gonna be doing the neckline maybe two inches higher to start with. And then I will figure out exactly what I wanna do with the little points for the yoke up here. I am gonna be using the yoke from the front bodice piece as a reference for some stuff we're gonna be doing here on the back. But I just wanted to make a note of something I forgot to mention that I like to do on my yoke pieces, especially when they're just like basically a little square like this. I like to label which side is the neckline edge, which side is the shoulder edge, and which side is the sleeve edge, just so I don't get turned around at any time. Um, it's a little tiny extra step, but I think it helps keep me from getting confused and like accidentally planning around the wrong edge here. So I like to know that this is the neckline, shoulder, sleeve, etc. And so the reason I've grabbed this piece from the front here, which is not labeled yet, terrible, is because I want to put the shoulder, and see I'm already getting lost, putting the shoulder to the shoulder here um, so that I can choose, which as you can see, it comes right to that same point. Um, so if in case this was different, then I would know to start the line here or start the line here. So I know where the neckline in the back at the shoulder needs to be. Cause I've drawn in my little curve from the center, uh, along the center back neckline of where I want the dress edge to dip down to in the back. This might even still be a little low. I might come up a half inch here because thinking about this plus this half inch off for seam allowance. Okay, I'm gonna come up a half inch here um, and then I'm just gonna connect this point down to here to get a basic idea of what I'm working with here. I shouldn't turn the camera on when I'm about to sneeze. Anyway, so here again, back on the white twill summer version here where I was trying to figure out what's going on. So the thing about doing this sort of same pointy situation here on the back is um, I have it, I feel like I have less room to, room to work with basically. So when I start drawing this triangle quite close to where the zipper center back will be, um, basically like the points, if I were to imagine the other side here, start getting closer and closer together, which kind of creates a kind of keyhole black widowy sort of design. So I'm not too mad about it, but I just do want to keep in check, keep in um, check that I don't make this triangle come all the way out to this kind of line, because then these two points will like kind of meet and it will look like a little tiny little keyhole up here, but that's just not what I want. Um, if that was what you were after, then go ahead and extend your points out to the center back line basically, and they will meet up at the center back. Of course your zipper will be down here and you'll have this little keyhole shape here. But for me, I don't want my points to match. So I'm just trying to keep that in mind over here on this version. And I think what I'm going to do, you can see actually, oh, hold on. Um, if I pull everything apart again, these are my actual pattern pieces that I used for the white twilled version. You can see that I wanted this to have a more of a squared off point here. If I were just to make the line for the yoke from here to this point, it'd be quite a fine little point up here. And I wanted to have that same sort of squared off sort of shape that I did in the front. So what I did is I came down in an angle a little bit here. And again, we'll show a picture of the back here. You can again, see how bad it fits, but you can also see what this neckline looks like made up in the white twill version. Um, for this new version here, doof, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. So if I were to, this is the neckline that matches up at the shoulder with our front yoke, and this is gonna be the back yoke. So of course I need this to match up here. Um, so that's where that matches up. And if I were to follow this curve a little bit and then just come straight down towards my neck at like kind of 45 almost, um, if I were to just come straight up from here again bloop, to meet that point, it would be quite a, uh, a cute little angle in here. And I want it to be much more of a 90 degree angle again to match the angles on the front. So in order to do that, I am gonna draw in a funny little shape again. And again, is the temptation to do, like I was showing on the front, a very like, pointy little like bat shape here. Yes, the temptation is there, but I think again, I'm just going to keep it angled to keep this dress seasonless. Uh, not that again, you can't wear bat spider webby sort of pointy things year round. Um, you can, um, but I just really want this dress to be versatile for me. So I want to keep it a little bit less spoopy, which is sad, but true. We'll make a spooky version in the, in the future. So I'm just basically, the way I found the shape for this back yoke, um, and again, this seems like a lot of straightness here, but imagine all of this is eaten up by the zipper. So the actual center back is along this line here. So again, my points on this side and this side 
will almost meet. They will be only a, an inch apart. But I'm just going to go ahead and draw in this shape here, and I will go ahead and slice these two pieces apart, add seam allowance, all that jazz again, and come back to you. Okay, so remember from having that front piece over here that this, this has that quarter inch of seam allowance. What had happened was I came in a little bit on the neckline and then I ended up adding it back in when I had the seam allowance on. Um, so this edge already matched it perfectly, so I didn't need to add any seam allowance up here, but I did want to add a little bit down here at the point of the triangle, or I keep calling them triangles, but like they're sort of squared off. Um, point a little bit basically, so I did just add an, a wedge of seam allowance here at the bottom so that I could re retain the point of the triangle that I, or the um, point that I wanted. Again here, and that was what I had ended up doing up here. Uh, um, on the first version, you can see here too, um, I added on that little wedge here, but nothing up here at the top. And again, I was trying to coordinate around having a button here, which I'm, of course I'm not doing this time. Um, you can see that was the twill version there. This is what the new version looks like. This, of course, is the seam allowance for where this will get sewn onto this. So eventually, um, again, I'll go ahead and draw in a line to show you what this actually looks like without seam allowance, so you can get an idea again. We can again, in green Sharpie this time, see what the actual finished neckline will look like once that half inch is removed from all the bits here. So again, if you drew it exactly as you want it, add seam allowance. If you don't mind it getting cut into, like this for example, I didn't add any seam allowance along to this edge because I was I drew that line originally assuming a half inch would be taken out. Um, sometimes I add seam allowance, sometimes like to the neckline edge, like up here I added that wedge here, and sometimes I just incorporate it when I'm thinking about it. I know that makes it more confusing for you guys. I'm sorry, again, this is half tutorial, half just my sewing diary. So I'm just gonna do it the way that I would normally do it and just try and walk you through it as best I can. If you have additional questions, again, leave them in the comments below. I will try my best to answer them as best as possible. Um, so this is gonna be sewn along here and I will do top stitching doo -doo -doo, along these lines here, which will be nice and pretty. And I think that raised neckline in the back, having this come down straight instead of at an angle in both the front and the back are gonna make a huge difference in the fit on the shoulder of this dress. And the fact that it's just a thinner fabric as well will help. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm going to take the front yoke and the back yoke and make them into one pattern piece so that we don't have to cut, you know, four pieces for the front, four pieces, or um, yeah, four pieces for the front, four pieces for the back. We can just do two on one side, two on the other. Um, so I will show you how I tape those two together basically. So as I've said before many times, um, my bodice patterns, my block patterns have seam allowance on them. So this is traced knowing that there is a half inch here, here, along this edge, along this neckline, along the shoulder, knowing that this has the seam allowance already inherent in it. So of course the things that I draft from it also have seam allowance already in them along the sleeve and along the shoulder, which means that this half inch seam allowance that I need in the shoulder to sew the front and the back together is already in this pattern piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it on here on the back and the front as well. I've just gone ahead and taken my ruler, put it along the edge of my pattern piece and drawn in that seam allowance so that I can see it. I already know it's there, but I wanna be able to see it for this next step here. So I've done that for my back yoke I just made and I did that on the front one that I made earlier in this situation. Now I'm going to go ahead, now imagine again, neck edge, neck edge. So this is actually flipped. Unfortunately, I have my patterns both with the centers in the same direction. Technically, I think this is supposed to be like this so that you can imagine them properly because this and this goes together. So I think my back pattern is just flipped um, from how you are supposed to draw them, but I just always know what the heck's going on. So um, neck edge to neck edge, shoulder to shoulder sleeve area, sleeve area, but just means my, one of them has to be turned around. I guess maybe we'll do the front and we'll turn the back one backwards, right? So if I want to have my yoke all in one piece, I need to tape the front and the back together. Again, this is neck edge, this is neck, back neck edge here, unfortunately, because my pattern is flipped, you can't see the markings, but again, I wrote down neck, neck, shoulder, shoulder, sleeve, sleeve. So these two shoulder seams, are going to be eliminated in order to create this into one piece that works for both the front and the back. But I can't just tape them together here along that line because there's seam allowance in here. There's a half inch on here, there's a half inch on here, and I don't need seam allowance if I'm no longer gonna have a seam here along the shoulder. 
So to eliminate that, I'm going to line up this line that I just drew with this line that I just drew, overlap them so that that seam allowance is truly eliminated because I don't need that seam allowance without a seam, and then I will tape that shut. So I've taped the front yoke and the back yoke together along that shoulder seam. So now this is our neckline of the whole dress basically, uh, of the back point area and then the front point area coming in here. And so instead of cutting front yokes and back yokes, we will just cut a left and a right basically. Um, and I will be cutting four of this because I want uh, to have it lined basically in the same fabric. So I will have two on the right, two on the left, and everything will be contained inside these pieces when we get to the sewing steps of this. So, but now my yoke is one piece. It's the front and the back together, and I don't have to have that shoulder seam. It's eliminated. So this, if you imagine, this is the where the sleeve will be. This is the shape with my imaginary shoulder in here. That's going to be the yoke. So this will be on my shoulder up here, and this will just kind of drape over the shoulder. Oh, I don't have a dress form in here. I was going to show you, but I don't have a dress form. I'll go grab one. There she is. All right. So again, that's the shoulder seam we just eliminated. This is how this is going to sit. Then we have the rest of the neckline from the bodice curved here. And then coming to the back. Again, we have this point here. And then the rest of the back will be here with that zipper in the back. So we've just eliminated that shoulder seam from the yoke. And this is how it will will be on a person, um, in this case, Donna, the blue dress form. Her name is Donna, my roommate named her in college. I did just go ahead for my last step for the bodice here, do a little facing for the back, little bit of neckline edge as well. So I just do a quick little traced facing for that. Again, it's just tracing a two and a half inch width little facing. So now I have the back, the back facing, the yoke, which will be its own facing in a way as well the front facing and the front bodice all done. So actually I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee, hang out for a second while I drink that, have a cookie, and then I will come back and I will show you how I draft the puff sleeve to go with this dress and then we will work on the skirt pattern. All right, I've been trying to decide what exactly I want to do for the sleeves for this dress. Originally I was just going to do sort of a puff sleeve, sort of the normal sleeve I do with a cup on it. Um, but I think instead what I kinda of wanna do, if you imagine this is the shoulder seam here, I'm going to have gathering here at the top of the sleeve, but instead of just having it plain here, I kind of want to take a little pleat and make a little pleat here at the cuff. So this comes in a little bit and has no more cuff. I've never done a sleeve like this before, but it could be something fun to try. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and trace my pattern here. Um, and then I marked the center of my sleeve here. So I will go ahead and mark the center right here. Also marking the front and back because I always get that easily get that mixed up when my curve is quite similar. Um, and then I'm going to take an inch off the hem of this to make them a little bit shorter. This sleeve pattern here, my like basic block sleeve, um, I'm not even sure how long this is from like the cap, from the cap down it's about 11 inches. Um, from the underarm, it's about six inches. Um, normally this length here allows me to create a like, if I'm just using this basic sleeve, create a cuff along here, cause I'll fold this up like three inches and then fold it up again to create like a little false or all in one cuff around the edge here. But of course I don't, I'm not gonna be doing that this time. I've decided to not do a cuff on this sleeve. So I'm gonna take an inch off of the length of the sleeve here. Um, maybe I'll take more than that. I guess that's still quite long, huh? Mm -hmm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna take another half inch. So I'll take an inch and a half off the length of this, um, which will leave me still like an inch. I'll surge the edge and I'll turn it up an inch to hem this sleeve as well. Um, even though it will be a little bit curved, which is a shame. Maybe I'll figure out how to do it in the pleats if that isn't the case. This is going to be much more experimental. We'll see how this goes. Um, this is less of a thing where like I'm showing you something I've done before, more of a thing where I'm showing you me trying something. It could go horribly wrong. We'll find out shortly. Um, but first things first, I'm going to take an inch and a half off the hem of this. I'm going to draw a line down the center and then um, from there I will use my ruler and just draw two inches a line two inches a line, and I will use that to split and add some puff fullness into the sleeve as well. So let me show you that in the next step. So I've just cut my sleeve out and taken that inch and a half off the hem here. And then I've sliced down the center 
and then two inches out from either side of the center so that I can add a little bit of fullness up here into the top of my sleeve. I'll probably split this apart like so. So I'll tape some paper underneath here and then this edge ends up being a little bit taller than here so you kind of smooth out this so it adds about half inch or so here to the top of the sleeve cap for some extra fullness in there and then of course all that extra fullness gets gathered into the sleeve cap which of course creates a bit of a curve here at this hem but I'm thinking of putting like a dart here in the center of the sleeve to create to make this come in just a little bit so that it is then straight and I can just hem it we'll see how this goes okay so I've just filled in these splits here I just added two inches to the center and an inch and a quarter on either side for a little bit of puff here up at the sleeve cap and then I just because that raises these up higher than this when you do that um, I just smoothed that out which adds about a mm, little over half inch probably here at the very center of the sleeve cap which again just helps with the puffing of it all so my goal in doing this is a to make a cute little different kind of sleeve but b when you add this fullness up here this creates this to be curved curved edges are not hemmed as easily as straight edges are are they no now could i do a facing could i do a lining could i do bias tape yes there's many things i could do but what i want to do is surge this raw edge and turn it up underneath and hand sew it so that you know it's easy to hem so what i want to do is re-straighten out this edge and in order to do that i'm going to make a pleat here um, which is not completely going to be an even pleat. Like I'll take a half inch here, half inch here, but I will finagle it up here so that it helps straighten this out. And then I'm going to treat these two bits of fullness that I added to flare up the top. I, I The reason I put those in is to add fullness up here, but I'm going to treat them as darts down here and sew up this area three inches from each point here to, again, re-straighten out the bottom edge here so that I can just turn this up and hem it but also have a different cute little sleeve thing going on so we will see when I'm sewing this exactly how I'm going to do that because it's hard to explain now and I'm you know I don't really know how I'm going to make it work until I do it and like worst case scenario I'll hem this with bias tape instead and leave it as it is um, but I just want to try something a little bit different so we'll see when I get to the sleeve sewing how that works out but for now this is the sleeve pattern I'm going to go with um, I'm going to move on to tracing my basic block skirt pattern and then showing you how to make that into an a-line skirt it's super easy um, it's just dart more dart manipulation slashing and spreading so we'll do that next all right beginning again with a tracing from my block pattern I've just taken my it says pencil skirt front but it's my pencil skirt pattern and it's also my basic skirt pattern for my um, dress block my fitting shell pattern as it were again this is just poster board um, and in fact this poster board was not long enough for my like 30 inch kind of skirt requirements I like making my skirts quite long so this is pattern is only 27 and a quarter inches long so I traced the whole thing marked the darts and then added the extra length so that this paper version here is actually 29 and a half inches long so that my finished skirt will be 29 inches long um, but I'm going to go ahead, I've marked my darts here, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw those darts in. And then I will show you how we are going to make this pencil skirt pattern into a basic A-line skirt pattern by just opening up that dart fullness into the rest of the skirt for flare. All right, so I have just connected my dart points to draw in my darts here. And then I've just drawn a line from the center of the dart all the way down to the hem. And just like when we're doing slashing and spreading on the bodice, I'm going to slice up from this line to this dart point. I'm going to slice in from the waist down to this dart point. We will close this and open this. So I will cut slashes into all of these and show you what that will look like. Okay, so here is the waist. This is the center front on the fold of this pattern. Um, here's my little darts that would be at the waist of my pencil skirt. And I've slashed all the way along that center line of those down to the hem of the skirt here. So just like when we move the darts on the bodice basically we're moving these darts the fullness at the waist we're closing the fullness at the waist uh, and opening it up into the rest of the pattern now because this pattern is much longer than say a bodice pattern is magic happens um, so just like when we close darts up in the bodice closing some fullness there opens up fullness elsewhere um, on a bodice maybe it would like you know open a dart that looks the same but because this is so much wider exponentially the dart is much larger so the full amount of fullness gained from doing this 
creates the A-line skirt here. So I'm just going to do the same for both of these, closing the darts of the waist, which creates the waistline, gives it a curve here, and then opens up fullness in the skirt to create an A-line skirt here. So we just have a little bit of a flared skirt now instead of having the um, pencil skirt like the basic block normally has a or the sloper or whatever usually has a pencil skirt but of course now by closing the darts at the waist we eliminate the darts at the waist which means there's less sewing to do up here which is nice because this skirt now this is gonna be on the fold so this front pattern has no darts and is nice and flared for us and the same we will do the same with the back um, but of course the back will have at least that center back seam for where the zipper goes in but um, there's no darts in the skirt when you do an A-line skirt like this, so it does save you some time there, which is good because I did add that additional dart into the front of this bodice. So I'll be sewing more darts eventually, but not in the skirt, which is nice. But that's how you take a pencil skirt pattern and make it into an A-line skirt pattern. You just close up those darts at the waist and then fill this in with more paper, and you have an A-line skirt pattern, basically. So it's a really easy modification to do. If you have a, you know, dress pattern, a commercial pattern that you quite like, you like the fit of the bodice, everything, but it has a pencil skirt or a straight skirt and you wanted to try something else, you can very easily trace a copy of the pencil skirt pattern, close those darts, let it, the fullness open up and have an A-line skirt. So it's a very easy modification to do. And uh, you can see how quickly that magic happens with that slash and spreading of the darts here. My darts up there, open the fullness into the skirt. I have these huge darts basically that create the sweep of the A-line here. Down here, this is where my original hem was. I'm just gonna go ahead and connect these areas, smooth them out. Um, if you need help doing this, you can always measure, like this is 29 and a half inches, measure down from this point and draw a line down the center of this, 29 and a half inches to have another point, a reference point for connecting these along that if you wanted to. I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball this curve, draw it in and slice this extra off, and then I will have my front A-line skirt pattern finished. And just like for the front, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same modification for the back of the skirt here. So I've got my sloper skirt, pencil skirt pattern. I've traced that once again, added the length I needed once again, move this, hopefully without fluttering everything too much. So again, I just drew down the center of the darts on the back of the skirt, sliced those open, sliced my dart legs open. And once again, I will just close up this dart, tape this whoop, shut like that which opens up the fullness in the skirt here, and the same with the other dart. So I'll just go ahead and close these guys up, which again, not easy to do left-handed here. Um, so close these darts once again up here, tape them along those dart legs, and it will open up the fullness in my skirt for the back of the A-line skirt pattern. The only other thing I did differently to this was I did add in that quarter of an inch along the center back where the zipper will be again, just like I did on the bodice so that that will match up in the end but I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this paper here, draw in my hem again, and then my pattern for this dress will be done. Um, so I'm gonna actually go ahead and start ironing some black cotton sateen here. Sorry about the angelic light. Um, I'm gonna iron this black cotton sateen so that I can lay out this pattern on that, pin it and get that cut out, hopefully here before I go upstairs and have some dinner. So I'm gonna go ahead and press my fabric first, lay this all out, get that pinned, and cut this project out.
what I did next here. So for the bodice of this dress, I have the darts all sewn and pressed for the front bodice and the back bodices of this nonsense. Of course, I still have to put the yokes on, but we'll do that in a minute. I was trying to remember what order of operations I did this in. I also have sewn all the side seams together and then sewn the, or I searched the side seams and the waist of the skirt and sewed it together. It's chilling over here, basically. But here I am working on the bodice and I was trying to remember what order I did things in so I went and grabbed the offending, not perfect white version from upstairs. And I think what I did next was I put the facings on the front and the back and top stitched them and kind of got the, this part of the neckline finished. So I'm gonna take my facing here, pin that along, sew that on, uh, clip this curve, turn this inside, um, do some like edge stitching or like, well, do I wanna do edge stitching? Yeah, edge stitching and then top stitching. <laughs> and then that neckline will be finished. And then I will do the same sort of oper or operation for the necklines along the back. And then those will be done and I will start sandwiching this area here in between the double layered yoke situation, which I will talk you through when we get to it. But first I'm just gonna go ahead and sew on these facings to the front and the back, do that edge stitching and do that top stitching. Just a note here on the back, this is my center back where my zipper will be going. So I am not gonna sew, I'm only gonna sew this little bit of the edge of this, turn that edge stitch it that tiny bit. And I might actually leave top stitching on this area for after the zippers in and all the rest of this is done just so that I can not get it in the way of anything I might have to do later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch a tiny bit of the back neckline here. I will clip that curve, turn it inside and do any edge stitching and things I need to do, but I'm not gonna do top stitching back here yet, just yet, I think. <laughs> I got a bunch of the sewing done on this bodice so far. I'll probably do that in a voiceover or a text on screen or something like that. Um, but so now I have, this is the front bodice with the darts all sewn in with the facing put onto the neckline area with edge stitching and top stitching here on the neckline. As for the backs, I did just do a little bit of edge stitching on the facings for those, um, but left a lot open so that I can put the zipper in the back and hand sew that all down later. But these are the, the two back pieces and then my front bodice piece and then I have my yokes that we made. So this is the front and the back all in one piece as I did yesterday. And so I'm gonna go ahead and sew the yoke shoulder kind of area onto the front and onto the backs. Um, and the way that I do this is I cut out four of this piece. There's actually two here and two over here. And what I'm going to do is sandwich this part of the front bodice in between these two layers and then we'll have that little extension coming out same over here and then we'll do the same and I'll sandwich the back in between these two layers over here so that all the raw edges of these two pieces are all encompassed within each other and then I can sew this other little neckline area shut as well clip all the things that need to be clipped turn that right side out and then do top stitching along this whole edge here as well and then I will have my front bodice and back bodice connected at the shoulder and then I will connect them at the waist. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this and then I'll talk you through it. Once again I've done that thing where I'm making a project in all black and the, both sides of the fabric look relatively similar so it's hard to see what I have going on here. So I have one of my yokes the other and I have basically in between those two layers sandwiched this guy. So what I did was I pinned the bodice 
in between here. So the bodice goes from like here to here and it's pinned in between the two layers of yoke basically. So that when this line is sewn here, all that seam allowance for both pieces will be encompassed within the seam there and it'll be smooth on this side and smooth and all inside on this side as well. Now, I think what I did last time when I did the white version of this dress here is that I actually uh, pinned this like this oof, and then I actually oof, sewed, I can't do this with my left hand, so I pinned that um, shoulder-ish part of the bodice into the yoke up here and then I actually pinned along the neckline and sewed that all in one so that it would be nice and smooth and then I can do the back as well. I think I may have sewn it like all in one. <laughs> so like I did, I sandwiched the front and sandwiched one of the, you know, the back corresponding back piece doing the same sort of application that I did here on this side as well. And then I might've sewn it all in one. I'm not sure if that's possible. I'm gonna try and pin it and see if it is. all in one. So here's our front bodice. Here are our two yoke pieces. Here is the back bodice piece. Obviously this side seam and this side seam will eventually be sewn together, but I'm going to do the yoke area first. So what I did here was I sandwiched this front bodice piece between the two layers of yoke. So it's got this like facing layer or like lining layer and then the top layer that matches, of course, um, well, they both match. Um, and then that's just pinned along inside here so that all the raw edges, it'll be smooth on the outside. It will be nice and smooth and finished on the inside because that seam will be all inside in there. Now, uh, this neckline edge needs to be sewn as well. And then of course the same sandwiching needs to happen with this back piece. And so actually I can do this all in one. So I've got this piece sandwiched in between these two layers. I'm going to do the same for this back and I will pin along the neckline as well by turning this little piece inside out like a little pillow that will not get any stuffing basically. So I'm going to pin all this properly and see if I can show you what that looks like before I sew it. Um, it's one of the harder things to explain here but it's actually such a like satisfying thing to do and satisfying finish because this all gets super cleanly finished in the end by doing it this way. So let me show you. Now I promise what you're looking at is indeed the still the yolks. This is actually where the front bodice is sandwiched in here. And then that's the corner that overhangs into the neckline. This is the neckline, the front neckline into the back neckline. And then this is where the back bodice attaches to the back part of the yoke here. Now, unfortunately I've included this little bit here that makes it a little bit more difficult <laughs> than it should be. Hypothetically, I could go ahead and pin all along here with that sandwiched in the front, all along the neckline, all along this yoke here, and then all along here, no problems. But because I have an obtuse angle is meeting in the wrong way over here because of the way I designed this, I have to do a little bit of like, sew up to this point, clip, and then sew this little bit around here. So I can't do this all in just one go, which, you know, of course is disappointing because wouldn't we like to do that? Um, so basically because over here on our pattern, if we look, I'm so I'm sandwiching the front in between the yolks up there. I'm sandwiching the back between one 
and then another one on the back, right? But because I have this angle here meeting up, um, this is being sewn like along this fold line, but I kind of can't position this properly over here until I can clip this corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this line here, and then I will clip this area, swing these over so that I have the freedom of movement to be able to sew that part, and then I can go all the way around the rest of the edge with those two. Hopefully some of this makes some sense. Uh, I may have to, if, if, if it comes out very confusing, I'll do another little paper mini version maybe and try and show you with different colors of paper or something because all of course, all in black like this, it's a little bit confusing, but basically this is where the front is sandwiched. This open part of this little pocket I'm creating is where the sleeve will eventually go into and that's fine. Um, although I didn't surge these pieces, I'm just noticing. So that's something to do next. Um, <laughs> and so I will go ahead and sew the front uh, up into about halfway probably the shorter line of the neckline. So this is the front yoke being sewn onto the front bodice and a little bit of the neckline. Then I will sew the back yokes together, clip this here so that this can shift to the correct angle, sew that little bit, and then the rest of the neckline closed. I've sewn from the um, sleeve edge along the back yoke area on the bodice to the point where that little angle is. I went ahead and cut, you can see it's sliced here, along that angle so I could fold it a little bit more and continue to sew this yoke shape that I have going on here and then meet it up with how far I sewed in from the front along this neckline here. Okay, so my back yoke to back bodice is sandwiched in here. This is the neckline all sewn. This is the where the front yoke is um, sandwiched around the front bodice. Now I'm going to go ahead and clip these corners, clip this curve a little bit, clip this corner a little bit more, um, and then I'll show you that before I turn this right side out and we can see what happened. Okay, so there she is trimmed um, just so that those corners can come out nice and pointy. I'm going to turn it. Hopefully it will be the turning of it all will be captured on the other camera here just because I can't do it one handed while filming with my phone as well.
miraculously, focus, that has worked. So here's the front neckline. Here's going to be that little point in the neckline. Here is the back neckline and the point along the back neckline. This is the back yoke and bodice edge. This is the front yoke and bodice edge. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the dress form so you can see exactly where this is along the shoulder. This is the front neckline here. So we sandwiched this front bit of bodice in between the yoke here and ooh, the back along here. So we have our finished edge all along the neckline, finished edge here with that facing. Same on the front. There's no shoulder seam here at all. And the um, there's a finished edge of this being sandwiched in between these. This is all finished. This is all finished with that facing. So that's how you get everything all super clean up here in the bodice area. I'm going to go ahead and do a line of top stitching to match this all along the edge of this guy just for um, a little bit of you know added finish. And then I will do the other shoulder and then I will come back to you. Okay, so I have the yokes sewn on to the fronts and the backs, top stitching around those done, and I went ahead and surged the edges of my bodice pieces here along the waist, along the side seams, and along that arm side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew my side seams to my side seams on both sides. And so my side seams together and my entire bodice will be together, hooray! And then I can start working on the sleeves for today. So for my sleeves here, the first thing I want to do is while they're still flat like this, I'm just going to sew in the two lines of gathering stitching that I will be using to make these puff at the top of the sleeve cap here. So I'm just going to put pins um, where am I, I'm going to lay my pattern piece on top of the fabric here, line that up, put pins where the fullness was added, and I'm just going to be gathering, um, putting gathering stitches between those two lines about a quarter inch in um, and two lines of stitching right next to each other on a big stitch length. So like a size four is the largest stitch length on, stitch length on my machine. So I'll be doing a large stitch length just along the tops here, um, leaving the ends, um, no back stitching, just leaving the ends long. So I can then use those stitches to gather these sleeve puffs into the cap of my sleeve on my bodice here. So I'm gonna do those two lines of stitching on each of these first. Okay, so as I was saying when I was designing we're trying to design some sleeves for this. Um, I want to make this curved edge straight again so that I can just turn it up and hem this sleeve very easily um, by hand. So the way I'm going to do that is by using those areas of, ex um, we flared this out so that I could have puff up here on the top of the sleeve, but I'm going to use those as if they are darts. Use those three points of flare here. Copy these marks, this is going to be three inches long. Copy these marks as darts onto the back of my fabric here, sew those in, and see if that will straighten out my hem enough of this sleeve that I can just turn it up and um, do like a little uh, blind, I guess, not a blind, like a proper blind hem stitch, but a hem stitch that can't be seen, um, just to fold this up and cuff them like so, or not cuff them, but hem them like so. I can't speak today, I apologize. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I just marked up three inches from each of these original expansion points. I'm going to transfer those um, poked through the pattern with my awl here. This very useful tool this. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and transfer those marks onto my pattern piece, draw in the lines like as if these were just regular darts, and then I'm going to go ahead and sew them up like darts.
what's interesting is that of course this was going to work because that's how darts work and yet I'm so surprised that it worked and I'm excited about it. Um, so I've got these little accents of these darts down here that I'll give a little bit of a different shape to this sleeve and then I'll, I'll be puffing gathering the top of the sleeve like I normally would and then because this is now a straight line again I can just turn this in and hem it normally. But for right now the next step with these is going to be to sew the side seams of my sleeve so I'm going to do that for both of these and then I will go ahead and iron up a hem on these, hem it, pull my gathering in and set in these sleeves into my bodice.
So here is the finished black cotton sateen version of this dress design. I do like the way this one fits better than the white tulle version that I made earlier in the year, but I'm still not 100% happy with it, of course. Um, I would like the back to just fit a little bit better. Again, I'm still having some of the same problem with these like angled um, wrinkles coming in on the back bodice of this dress when it's worn, and I'm just not sure exactly what is causing that, so I'll have to do some research. Whenever I have something like this, like a little fit issue, I always try and hop, on hop online and type in like back wrinkling at angle bodice pattern fit issue or something like that and see what comes up and see if other bloggers or people on the internet have had similar fit issues before and how they were able to address them or what their ideas were in general. Um, this also I think is partially caused by this block pattern on me is just a little bit my basic block that is supposed to be fitted to me perfectly. Unfortunately, I think I've done the betrayal here and the block, nothing has changed, but I think I may have lost a little bit of weight over the past like year and a half or so when I made from when I made this. So everything I've been making this year has been coming out a little bit big. So <laughs> it's kind of annoying because I don't really want to adjust my block because I don't anticipate losing any more weight. It's not like I'm trying to or anything. It's only just by accident. Um, I don't really keep track of my weight or fitness or do anything like that. So um, it's kind of a surprise to me. I'm like, why is everything coming out a little bit big? And then I realized maybe it's maybe it's me, not the block, you know? Obviously nothing has happened to the cardboard, but things I, however, fluctuate a lot more than the cardboard does. Um, but I don't really wanna make any changes to my block because otherwise it fits really well. It's just a tiny bit too big. So I think in the future, I'll just have to remember to like maybe take off a tiny little bit of ease when I'm, um, after I trace the pattern to take out a little bit of ease out of it so that things will fit me a little bit better for now. Things like this, I really can go down a little bit because this was, or is, he has a little bit of stretch in the fabric. So I could have made it a little bit smaller and then it would fit me better now and still fit me when I'm at my more usual size, which is again, like a fraction larger. But again, I'm just being nitpicky and trying, you know, being a perfectionist as usual. I'm, I really am quite happy with this dress overall. I'm glad to have it in my wardrobe now. The nice thing about black cotton sateen like this, I think you can dress it up for evening quite easily, or at least for like dinner and things like that. Maybe not like the fanciest of occasions, but you can dress it up quite a lot for evening activities. And then also with like suede accessories and straw hat and stuff like that. I think it works great for daytime. That's why I like doing short sleeves on these because I feel like I make them work for fall you know, with a coat. And then also for summertime, having the short sleeves is nice, of course. So I'm really happy with how this came out. I'm happy to have it in my closet now. Happy to have a version of this sort of pointy, fun keyhole situation going on that fits a lot better than that white 12 version. I'll still be hanging on to that dress, but the more I stare at it looking, working on this project, the more I'm like, ugh, the fit on this really bothers me. So we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll sell that white 12 version, hmm. perhaps to someone who is nearly my size, but just a little larger than me and it would fit them better. Anyway, uh, thank you as always for tuning into this sewing tutorial diary sort of mashup, these videos that I do, these extra long sewing videos. Do let, um, again, let me know in the comments if you'd be okay with me doing like shorter versions of these sort of like wrap up, almost like commercials to watch this longer version in some ways and like putting them up the day after. Let me know what your feelings are on that kind of thing in the comments below. And again, as always, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you again soon. Bye.